Well, we know what a general um, version of a rotation matrix is. It's this one here. And how do we get it? Well, if we're if the rotation is through angle theta anti-clockwise, then the point P1 moves to cos theta sine theta. I call that P and P dash. And the point Q, which is 0, 1, goes to Q dash, because it goes round theta that way. So it goes to a minus sine theta cos theta. So there we have it. And most people know that one. What they don't know is what's the general reflection matrix. So let's have a look. OK, so we're going to follow the same sort of approach. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to think of the angle, the mirror line. This is my mirror line. Yep, yeah. there's my mirror line. And I'm going to think of that rather than having a gradient M, I am, I'm going to think of it as being an angle. Here's this angle here to the horizontal. And we're going to call that angle phi. OK, so I can use the same trick I just did for the last one. So here's my point. 1, 0. Where does that go to? Well, if you think about it, it gets reflected straight across the mirror line, doesn't it? So if it's theta below the mirror line beforehand, it's theta above the mirror line afterwards. So, and it's the length of this distance is still 1. So that's the equivalent of rotating P to P dash, but it's rotating through two lots of uh, phi, so the x value is the cos of 2 phi, and the y value is the sine of 2 phi. So that gives us the first part of our matrix, doesn't it? OK, now let's have a think what happens to the point 0, 1. Well, that point is 0, 1, and I'm reflecting in this line here. If you think about it, I could find out what that angle is there. So if this angle is phi, then this angle on that side is... Um, 90 minus phi, isn't it? What's happening? Well, this point is effectively being reflected in the opposite direction, isn't it? Going that way. And it started off there, and that length was 1, and it ends up this side at 1. If you think about it, if this angle is um, 90 minus phi, then this angle on this side must be 90 minus phi. If I add those two angles together, how far is it turned through? Well, it's turned through 180 minus 2 phi, hasn't it? And therefore, that allows me to find what this angle here is. Because, of course, that's, um, that angle plus the two red angles together must make 180. So if I subtract this from 180, well, what am I going to get? Well, this angle is going to be 2 phi, isn't it? And once I know that that's 2 phi, it's quite easy, given that this length is still 1, to work out what the coordinates of Q are, because the x value is going to be this distance here, which is going to be sine 2 phi. That's positive, isn't it? And the y value is going to be that distance there, which is negative, and it's cos 2 phi. There we go. So now I know where these points move to, I can combine them into a single matrix, can't I? Just rub out and make myself a little bit of space. So if I want to make the matrix for that, well, I need to know what happens to the 1, 0 point. It goes to sine theta 2, two sine 2 phi, cos 2 phi, sine 2 phi. What happens to 0, 1? It goes to sine 2 phi, negative cos 2 phi. And there we have it. That's the general reflection matrix. Uh, think of it as you need to know that the phi is this angle down here. You need to know that that's phi, don't you? That one there. And if you ever need to remember how to do it, just remember, find out where the points 1, 0 and 0, 1 map to. So there you go. General reflection matrix.